Yeah, I mean, any the, the, the UX and the UI, I don't know if there's any UX or UI designers um, out there, but the, these, like, bridges where, I think it was, who, who was it? I think it was Crypto um, someone. Uh, he had some good input into it. Um, but there's, like, you know, you, you're basically swapping networks. Um, but, yeah, yeah, Red, you can explain it. Yeah, so um, the way the bridge works basically is on your layer one, your Ethereum mainnet, um, you interact with the staking contract, and that essentially locks your ERC721 on that layer one. Uh, so no one can access it, and no one can withdraw it until you decide that you want to withdraw it from layer two. Um, so I've got a small process of how that would work. Um, so you'd select your realm that you wanted to transfer across um, and transfer it. This process takes about 10 minutes. Um, so first you'd approve the realm um, to be transferred into that staking contract on the layer one. And then... Uh, I don't think we can see the MetaMask stuff pop up. I think it's limitation. see MetaMask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, he's uh, he's interacting I'm... with MetaMask there, but for some reason I don't think screen share works. Uh, yeah, I don't think it, those little long it's browser pop ups work. Yeah. Okay. So I've just anyway I've um, approved the um, transfer of the ERC seven two one into the staking contract, and then we need to actually approve the withdrawal into um, the layer two, which is what I'm just doing in MetaMask at the moment, so you guys can't see. Um, Yeah, so essentially what this does is it um just to clarify, it's, this isn't the staking this isn't the resource staking contract. This is like a lockbox essentially. So when you deposit your um your you know Ethereum realm into this lockbox, it prints another ERC721 on layer two, which is what you interact with, and it's only you that then can withdraw the layer one realm with your layer two uh, realm and so when you do the transfer back onto layer one it burns the one on layer two and releases your one on layer one <laughs> although that was a bit wordy but i hope everyone follows along um yeah so i mean you can sort of see the um transactions going through the different networks at the moment um unfortunately the arbitrum explorer on the rinkby network which is the test network that we're using is really quite poor and doesn't show up for um for some time, um, so it can be a little tough debugging, but it is all happening there. Um, yeah. And once this layer two transaction goes through, then yeah, you've got your realm on Arbitrum at that point. Yeah. And we all got to remember, like this is like you know, Arbitrum's only been live for like what two weeks, two and a half weeks or something. Uh, I mean, it's been in beta for a little while, but like the the like the tooling around it, and you know, layer two optimistic rollups, they're very very cutting edge. Um, technology. I mean, they're solid. They're super solid, but they're you know they're all very new. Uh, so the these uh, the testing and the development of them um, take took a bit longer than expected. Yeah, and let's also stress that the the Rinkeby Arbitrum uh, creates a couple additional headaches that Mainnet yeah. does not. Um, yeah, yeah, so. The Mainnet is actually really smooth. Has a really nice block explorer. Um, but uh, the Ringaby network on Arbitrum is just slower than we'd like. Um, yeah. And doesn't yeah. have the same tooling. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, the, it's, it, the bridge in itself isn't that exciting. It's just a, you know, it's a tool to get your um, asset onto Arbitrum. But once it's there, and then it's when the fun happens, and, you know, these super cheap gaming actions can occur. And so everything that we're designing, um, so it, this bridge, like the back end and all the contracts are complete. We're just um, tweaking the UI and we'll be able to get it up um, in, into beta um, very shortly. Uh, but at the same time, we're still, we're, we're, we're designing these staking contracts and the, um, that, that will, you know, that will be the, the interactions on Arbitrum. And so everything we're doing 
is is to like we're trying to obviously be as gas efficient as possible even on arbitrum and there are um you know compression tactics that we're using and so we're hope the plan is that the transaction to you know transfer withdraw are going to be even cheaper um than other applications currently using arbitrum due to the way that we're structuring these contracts um and because it's 1155 tokens you'll be able to withdraw all of them um for very very minimal gas um so so yeah so yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of a uh, lot of moving parts in this um architecture um but it's it's coming together and we got, <laughs> really got to remember like you know this this whole project's four weeks old and so you know the more input you guys uh community can give uh um the better and the whole resource building upgrade path we're going to um make this a public spreadsheet which um people will be able to copy and um add input into it about what resources cost what to upgrade what resource uh which will explain uh as well and because you know this is the whole staking and the and the resource economy and stuff we'll be doing it all in beta um so everybody will be able to test it and we'll give feedback before we actually do the live one and so we'll make tweaks and just like in any game and i'm sure most people here are gamers you know there's always open betas um and so that's the similar design philosophy that we're going to do it's going to be a beta and you know the resource upgrade paths will be in that but we'll get feedback and then we'll tweak that for the production version because there might you know there might be some upgrade path that's more op than another one uh, but this is all we're all going to do this in the open uh which is great about this project is that we can all design this game together um and have uh input Yeah, did that go through Redbit? Yeah, that transaction's just gone through now. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if you're used to Etherscan than the um, Brinkby Arbitrum Explorer. It doesn't give you nearly as much information, but that's the successful uh, transaction now. So the 721 is available on, um, on Arbitrum now. Yeah, cool. Well, um, yeah, so we'll uh, plan is to get this up very shortly. Um, just doing the last bits uh, on it, um, but yeah, well, why don't why don't uh, it's probably why don't you Squiddy just talk about what we're about to do in in terms of outreach and this um, giveaway that we're planning? Yeah, thanks. And I did in Lord of a few. That was great. Um, I've said it a few times. I'm sure I went over it in the last meeting and in chats. Um, this is a unique project. It, it's it's not a it's not a traditional PFP where you get six weeks of hype leading up to it, and the product's just an image. Um, we everything we're doing here is absolutely unique and building from from well ground zero all the while where that's where the community came in as well. So everyone in the community now are just early investors in this crazy thing we're building, which obviously is different to a PFB because of the utility and, and well, we're building a permissionless gaming. Um, so it's been a bit difficult for outreach, considering we don't have the tangible product yet. Um, but I think the, the momentum's been great so far, but as, as you can see, the build's been pretty crazy over the last, what, three weeks now. Um, but I think we're at the stage where we're actually, we can fully push the product. Um, so we're gonna dive in, uh, uh, using the same strategy that we've been doing um, as, the medium articles as you would have seen the one we just posted and the one we're about to release that dives into the micro and macro economics we're going to run a big promo a, a giveaway um launching today which will run for a week um giving away five realms that have been swept up with um varying 
rarities. Um, so this will be kind of the first big push we do to get out there, um, especially via Twitter, growing the community. Um, that's what we need. We need our community to grow now and to pick up some minting from that and obviously create hype and give the OGs a chance to win one of these realms. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at now. And we, of course, have been hearing the few members mentioning, you know, high mint price and I guess, you know, concern that minting hasn't kicked up and everyone wants the blue tick on OpenSea. Um, so we've been chatting and we have had ideas and um, yeah, I think Coin, if you want to jump in here and run through the strategy we decided on. Um, and then after that, we can probably dive into Q and A. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so we, we definitely hear uh, that we want to end the minting process. There's a lot of benefits to it. Once the realms are no longer minting, uh, we can get verified on OpenSea. Um, the the tooling and databases become much easier to uh, manage, and we can open source them more uh, because all of that data can then be public at that point. And um, but we we didn't want to remove the ability for people to get their realm at uh, at the min price uh, too soon. And so that's why we've been kind of working alongside on the dev portion while we um, allow people to continue to mint. But we believe that it's time for minting to end. And so here is going to be the plan. We are going to be doing the outreach and the marketing um, this week that Squiddy just spoke about. And on October the 4th, Monday the 4th, correct? Um, on October 4th, uh, whatever realms are unminted, um, will get minted by the team and held as, uh, a treasury. And so if anybody is looking to mint realms, if anybody wants to try to get the remaining wonders, I think there is about 20 of them left. Um, they would have to do so before the fourth. And we think that this is the best way to do it, we discuss uh, a provably fair way for us to mint a certain amount of realms every day until they were completely unminted, uh, all minted. But our concern was that that's not necessarily fair um, because you know the the state of the realms and which realm is rich, which is known um, to me, uh, you know the. The API is not public if the realm has not been minted, uh, but all that data was constructed when the realms were created. So we think that this is the best pass forward. We're gonna give people a little over a week. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of marketing and a lot of outreach during that period. And once uh, that, that period completes, uh, we are just going to go in and we're gonna mint whatever hasn't been minted. Uh, and then those mints will be held um, in the team controlled wallet uh, as a treasury of sorts. And so we're really looking forward to then that week, once they're all minted on the fourth, uh, we're gonna reach out to OpenSea before that, and we're gonna let them know what our plans are, try to get that conversation going so that we can move towards verification as quickly as possible. Yeah, so that's the plan for the rest of the realms. Um, minting will continue until the fourth, and then we'll we'll take the rest of them. Great. Well, let's uh, let's jump into some questions. If anybody has any, everyone just just unmute yourself and ask a question, or we'll type it in the uh, roundtable chat. I think there was a question in Realms chat about um, any tie-ins with the Deed project. Uh, yeah, I think 
I think with, you know, we want to be able to integrate as many, you know, projects, but the core focus right now is to getting onto ARB and getting this like economy, um, you know, getting the staking going. Um, and it, all, all with the, the design philosophy that we can open up. And I don't know if there's any, we might, uh, I don't know if anyone's a Solidity de developer or anybody likes looking at contracts. Uh, we can do a deep dive into our whole arch architecture that we're designing because there are some novel ideas in it. Um, or novel in themselves, but putting them together is. And uh, we can go over our design, design philosophy when designing the system. Because it is, we have always from the beginning structured it so it can be upgraded and can be extended. Um, and these are the design decisions we're making now because you can't retroactively go and, um, you know, change contracts uh, easily. You can't, but there are, there's ways you can upgrade them, but you can't go back on yourself. So we're structuring it to be able to allow integrations and interoperability between other projects. Um, but at this very moment, it's not our core focus. Our core focus has to be on getting into ARB. And then, you know, the bridge that we've designed, um, this can be, um, you know, upgraded to allow other uh, derivatives to come through as well. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. I would take that a step further and say, you know, there are conversations happening with, yeah. you know, multiple derivative projects, but it really boils down to the same core issue, which is they're all kind of doing their own thing. And um, we have a really clear vision for what's getting built right now. And there's going to be a very clear path to have other projects uh, involved. And I think we really want to have that open door policy of like, we're building with collaboration in mind. Um, but, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the projects that have reached out, it's like the conversation ends up stopping where it's like either your vision is so different. You're basically recreating what we're also trying to create. Um, and there's not a lot, a great fit there, or um, there's really no ideas for collaboration because they're kind of the derivative might not be doing anything other than existing. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop to a place where when those derivatives are like, hey, we'd love to collaborate, we can we have an answer to the question of, well, what do you want to do? Because we can say, hey, here's how you can become part of the ecosystem and let's talk about how this can mutually benefit the communities. Um, so those conversations are happening, but I, I just think it's, you know, we're kind of in a little bit of a limbo because we have a clear plan that we don't want to get distracted from and we want to execute well and quickly. Um, and we're always open to having the conversations and we're continuing the conversations, uh, for sure. Um, so ZK Truth talked about purposely minting the, uh, floor realms, uh, told for the treasury to give more of an incentive to mint, like there'd be more rare ones. Uh, I, I'm open to thoughts and a discussion on that. Uh, I feel pretty strongly that I don't want to uh, use any of the information that we have about what realm is which. Um, I just don't want to use that information. I personally have minted no realms. Um, the only realms in the dev wallet are ones that have been purchased off OpenSea. Um, I think that is just much more, it's a much cleaner um execution to allow people to continue to mint randomly um and then uh and then we just take whatever's left then there's no questions there's no debate about whether we use that information for good or for evil uh and i would also just say like statistically uh, especially in terms of wonders um there's a lot of wonders statistically uh, for how many realms are left. So I do think that there, if you want to talk about incentive of what's left, I think that incentive already exists. And I don't know if we have to juice it much more. Um, yeah. And I, I think the fact that there's so many wonders uh, remaining is uh, 
It's always been interesting to me because it's, you know, they were generated randomly and then they were also minted randomly. Like people could put in whatever number they want. So like uh, the fact that there's, I think like, I don't know, I haven't checked today, but like 19 or 20 left in 1300 um, is is a, a pretty high statistical incentive um, for those who still haven't minted or were thinking about minting. Yeah, sometimes numbers are really weird. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so do you want to talk a little bit uh, about Jax's question, Pew? What will make people who do not hold a realm want Lord? Yeah, so this is what I was saying at the beginning of that article about, you know, the entry into the metaverse, into the loopverse, is that you'll need Lord to interact with these resources. And then because these resources are themselves at 1155 tokens and we're designing the contract to be extended, you'll be able to consume those resources in, uh, in potentially other contracts in the future uh, with, you know, say, just, uh, just uh, hypothetically speaking, you could create a contract that consumes resources, a specific amount of them, uh, on a specific Wonder Realm that outputs a specific NFT token um, that can be, can be used in a special game. Um, and like all these, uh, like there's there's so many possibilities for this. Um, and like we don't have the you know definitive answer of like you know absolutely everything you can do with them. Um, but we're building the this this structure to allow these other to contracts to exist that will consume them. And so you're going to need Lord to get into the resource game um, uh, to buy the resources to consume them. So, yeah, that, so, yeah, I, I guess it's like, it's this direction that we're designing now that will allow the consumption of them um, moving forward. And the it's almost like it, we're building this SDK I don't know if it's like a the programmers out there, but it's like a um, it's like a developer kit that people will be able to use these resources into other contracts, and we're obviously going to do our own contracts, and we'll be able to maybe vet the other ones that exist, um, and then these these other contracts are basically miniature games that use the resources as um you know you know as collateral in the game, and so. I don't know, Red. Did you want to touch on any of that? Can, I, can I can I jump in real quick too? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that we're also going to do marketing around the token. You know, we're gonna you know have interest in the token because every day you see tokens launching that have no utility, uh, and we're gonna explore all those you know marketing channels. So I think that we're gonna see interest in Lord, not just in people in our ecosystem, and also it becomes a way for oh wow, the Lord token's doing this, the Lord token's doing that. Well, let me investigate it some more, and then boom, they, they decide they want to dig a little deeper, pick up some realms on open seas, so it becomes like a pretzel as opposed to a funnel. Yeah, uh, I'll just add to that as well. The um the other derivatives as well are gonna be play a big part in this. Um you know, obviously as we get these other derivatives staking into the realms um through that mechanism and earning resources themselves. Then you know there's an unlimited amount of derivatives out there and people that will be pulled into this uh realms lords token ecosystem so that's going to be a big driver of demand yeah exactly so the the, the the hot total you know the macro and the micro that we're designing it basically all funnels through this uh the marketplace um and you need the lord to interact with these resources so that's been a design decision for a lot of these um the yeah these micro um economic functions that we're designing. Um is that what was the other question? Is there a plan to cut over to take a cut of resource generation for the treasury so that you're funded to create future drops? Not on the um, treasury uh, not on the generation side, but on the trading side is where that would likely happen and on the building side of upgrades as I understand yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
you'll basically have to consume resources to build upgrades and a percentage of that will be um, sent to the treasury. And then also in the trading, in the market, uh, there'll be liquidity pools, which uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a fee to trade on the market, which goes back into the treasury and this treasury will be then controlled by the DAO, which is controlled by the, all the Lord holders. And we then decide what to do with it. Um, but you got to remember, resources are infinitely, you know, they're basically an infant supply. Um, and so it's the consumption um, that, that's really important of them. So they keep getting produced and burnt. Um, any other questions? I think Jax is writing another one. I think ZK also mentioned a bit earlier about other RUM layer twos. Uh, we're ah, definitely yeah. interested in, in uh, the development of all these layer twos. And yeah, there's some really interesting stuff um, happening in the ZK snarks and so on. Um, so we'll keep on top of that and keep planning as we go forward um, for what the best options are and potential, you know, interchain operability, but um, or inter layer two operability, I should say. Yeah, um, it's yeah, all pretty for new. the moment. Yeah, for the moment, Arbitrum is the best option. So, yeah, we'll, um... and, but they're all going to be, you know, Ethereum um, virtual machine compatible, and but they all have their own little quirks. But I'm imagining there's going to be some super smart. Maybe Vitalik will do. I think he wrote he wrote an article on on, on a potential um, layer two to layer two transfer, and I, I can guarantee that there's thousands of Solidity engineers working right now on how to figure that out. Uh, and so it'll it'll emerge at some point. And because they're all, you know, because what we're designing are just tokens, uh, they can be able to be swapped between different um, layer twos. But I mean, I, I don't know what everyone else's opinion is, but my opinion is that um, there'll be, you know, in a couple of years, or uh, maybe at the end of the year, uh, there'll be multiple layer twos and uh, with different, you know, contracts written on them. And uh, there, there, there might be, maybe there might be like 10 or something in the future knows but that's where it's all heading um dungeons so yeah this is where we're this is where the um this this upgrade path and the extendability that we're designing into these staking contracts comes in because what we're like it just just to take a step back of what what we're doing with these s realms is we're we're basically creating this data layer um which is attached to an s realm but that data layer is constantly changing. So that data might, you know, you, you might be have built upgrades on your wood and dragon hide, and that will be reflected in your um, S realm uh, data layer, which then you could potentially sell. Um, and so dungeons are, you know, uh, essentially an extension of um, what we're, what we're designing. And so, we haven't, to be honest, we haven't um, thought any deeper about, well, when thinking about it, the derivatives, um, but Dungeon specifically, there'll be some, like, we'll figure out a way to uh, attach them to a realm and allow people to, you know, uh, explore them and potentially win something. But it all comes down to being on Arbitrum and uh, this additional staking layer, which we're designing at the moment. If we decide to mint the realms, would you consider listing a certain percentage of them at higher prices on OpenSea to build up the floor price? Uh, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> Coin? Um, I think we are going to discuss how they're going to get used as part of the treasury. Yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. listing a certain percentage of them at a higher price doesn't do anything to the floor. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we've decided on exactly how they're going to be used, but we want them to be used in a way that's responsible, right? And so we're going to consider... Mm -hmm you know, before we do anything, but the, the number one step was we're basically going to be commit. We're committing to end the minting process by minting the rest of them. 
um, mm. on that date. And, and we'll have future updates on exactly what's going to be done with those. Yeah, exactly. I think did we touch on Jax's qu did we touch on Jax's question, sir? Oh god, I missed that one. What one's that? Uh, uh, is there a uh, way to add unknown resources or hidden resources so that we could do exploration and find an extra resource? Yeah, uh, so it's a good idea. It's a really interesting concept. Yeah, and and we can use that similar concept for a whole range of things like you know. Uh, potentially burning resources to obtain a new NFT um, instead of a resource. It could be some other sort of NFT that interacts with your realm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting concept. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea, Jax. That's definitely something that um, could be done in the future. Um, and I mean, all, like, everyone is pumping out these ideas about, you know, they're, they're all great ideas, um, but we also just need to, like, <laughs> we need to build the foundation. and And so, like, we need to build the foundation as, um, you know, as, as, as logical and simple as possible, which allows for this extension. Um, and because, you know, I mean, a lot of other games, you know, the best analogy to think of in a game is, you know, most games have their own centralized servers. And, you know, just like, you know, Blizzard and Diablo, then they can just go in and change and do an update about, you know, what, um, you know, what special item does what. Um, will, whenever they want, uh, and so and it's very hard. But well, we can't really do that once we've um, done the first layer. So this is why, from the very beginning, we need to think like small building blocks and how do we build on it. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, Grug, do you want to ask a question? Uh, you can carry on. With the other ones, and then I'll speak later. Okay. Are there any conversations happening with the loot team and how they might use the realms? Kimboski, sandbox. Is that Snoop's thing? Mm. God, it moves so fast. I think I saw something about Snoop Dogg's... Is that, is that the Snoop thing? No, nah, it's... Um, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's the one. The Sandbox and uh, Snoop Dogg. It's the Dogg. Snoop thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> talk to them. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, Snoop Dogg's himself. He was that guy, Medici, yeah. somewhat or other, on Twitter. Um, uh, and in terms of the loot team and how they might use the realms, well, I mean, I think the loot, it, like... I don't think there is a loot team. Like, uh, loot was kind of this Genesis thing, unless I'm mistaken. I mean, the the loot Discord's kind of divulged into just spam. Um, it's it's unbearable. Um, but I think that there's no real loot team, and this is where the derivatives are kind of picking up the steam. Is that derivatives actually have bigger teams? Well, there is no loot team. It's just there's a loot community, I guess. Um, and there's nothing really being built on loot. It's like we're building the thing to allow loot to be used on realms. And so it's kind of in reverse. Is that we want loot to be able to be staked on realms and M loot. Uh in order to utilize, you know, the, the loot's loot bags, whatever properties they have. From a uh, do you like mine, like in um, Minecraft, in the sandbox thing? I honestly, I haven't even looked at it. Yeah, the loot, the loot team is basically Dom, and Dom is yeah, he got married or something. He's out of the country. <laughs> so. Yeah, but yeah. you are, we are, you, you guys are pretty active in that build the loot build Discord, and I do think that we've been trying to like cross pollinate the talent, yeah. and yeah, yeah. and stay involved in those conversations for sure. Yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff happening in that loot build um, channel, and uh, yeah, we're, we're constantly reaching out uh, to you know anybody that's doing interesting things. I think we reached out to the loot mart place, like they launched yesterday, where they did all the crazy um, uh, GPU renders. Like uh, I think it's called what's it called, pixel art or something. Um, oh, what's it called? clip, clip, clip art or something. Um, anyway, they they basically generated all the items 
individual loot items as images. Uh, I think it's called Loot Mart XYZ. And we reached out to them. Um, and we also reached out to uh, Loot Explorers as well. Uh, I, gu I guess it just comes down to, you know, what, what's on chain and what's not on chain. And uh, uh, how do we use it on Arbitrum? And like, what are these, what are the projects, what are these other projects plans? And as, as Coin touched on before, the conversation only ends because they don't really have a plan. It's just a standalone NFT. Um, which, you know, it doesn't, it's not really, we, we need the data on chain in order for the game, for a game to work. Uh, an NFT that just is metadata isn't really going to work. Yeah, DV. So, um, DV is the actual inspiration that we used for, um, uh, this bridge. And we used a lot of their, um, uh, a lot of their design. Um, uh, thinking around this bridge. Uh, I think the DV is like you deposit loot and you get a DV on Arbitrum, if I'm correct. Yeah. I, I think that was, that was more like a proof of concept. I'm not sure where they're taking that. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely... Uh, and it definitely potential for collaboration with that if it, if it makes sense uh but you know we kind of we kind of want like you know a uh, loot themed projects um and you know the whole loot verse and and projects that are like you know kind of in theme with the whole loot but that's not to say that we can't expand it uh further for sure um but we need to make it you know fairly um you know concise game with not too many different you know Law popping up everywhere. I want to keep the whole loot lit law um, consistent. Um. Yeah. Well, I think that was. Is there any other questions other than Dark Lord Krog is e eagerly awaiting? Yeah, if I, if I may ask some questions. Mike? Yeah, yeah, go for it, mate. Uh, first of all, like, uh, yeah, thank you uh, very much for... Uh, I'm really, really in love with this project. I really love what you guys are doing. And, yeah, I feel, I feel you guys are really committed. And, uh, you know, eventually just, I think, like, the entire community is kind of, you know, just kind of found each other on the same vibes that you guys are basically creating something that has you know it's kind of like never done before it's kind of like groundbreaking and uh, i think everyone is uh, kind of excited about it um so yeah uh, i want thank to you. thank you yeah i can see that you guys like are really sweaty developers and uh, you want to get like this shit done which is what i like to see um, yeah, I'd like to ask some question. Um, first of all, uh, just just general stuff about uh, first of all, kind of like transparency, in a way that um, I know that you guys already did some steps towards being more transparent. That I know conspiracy not was the uh, the first creator, and then he created like a, a multi uh, sig address for the entire team. But like, uh, which is great. Uh, I I think. Uh, well, I'm I'm thinking, is there gonna be maybe like in this Discord rather than on uh, the main website, uh, if there's gonna be maybe like a way to follow the kind of uh, you know expenses and plan of marketing, especially. Uh... Yeah, definitely. Though we'll we'll get to that. I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've just been heads down developing, um, but yeah, that's that's a good plan. I mean, we want to build this whole uh, system out together and be open with you know with everything. Um, in terms of the DAO, um, like I think at this this immediate moment where like we're designing this system, um, when we when we have the system up and like that, that's when the DAO will kick in. Um, but we need to move really fast right now. And so we need to um, take this direction of the development and stuff um, right now. 
and then once like the DAO set, like the the staking set up and the resources and everything, um, that's when these you know some of the contracts can be owned by the DAO um, that don't need to move as fast as what, how fast we need to move right now because DAOs are great, um, but they also you know that they, they don't they can't move as fast as you know just like we can make a decision right now I can make a decision and we can just put it up on the website and we can change it, um, but if everything has to be run through the DAO then it's um, at this at this point in time, it's it's going to move too slowly. Um, but yeah, any coin or red? You want to add anything to that? Or nope. Uh, um, no, no, nothing at the moment. No. Uh, yeah. I think uh, I think personally, like you guys are quite uh, doing great into actually focusing on uh, development rather than the marketing and the hype, which eventually, like, it will just. Uh, you know, kind of like reward early, you know, uh, people, you know, believe, let's call them believer in a kind of way, just like people that they call me interested early. And I think, yeah, I, I, I'm honestly like just really, really excited with what you guys are doing, just because I, I think it's like one of those like few projects in the space of like a crypto that is actually, uh, you know, uh, it just like kind of like take all the uh, checklist in like in the way they are listening to the communities. You guys are like really, really quick on acting on, uh, on you know, whatever uh, the community is proposing. And, uh, you know, I, I feel, you know, once in like maybe a hundred projects that you get into to be actually kind of be able to be part of the community, whether you are like, part of the team or just you know people that got, uh, randomly got into these projects so uh which i i do kind of really rate that so um you know that's one of the reasons why i particularly like these projects and Thank you. um yeah also go like um uh another couple of questions um so well i i i think well, I can see that basically, like the, the project, I understand, like that you guys you're setting a kind of like deadline, uh, which you said is like the fourth of October, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think to be honest, like it's uh, how many realms is out there? Like one point three k, roughly, one three eighteen. I think like getting one hundred thirty one. Well, 32 Ethereum, like, on board, it, it shouldn't, like, take that long if the marketing is done properly, which I think in, like, two weeks probably is going to be enough. And I really do trust that, you know, the, the thing is, like, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, uh, kind of, like, 50-50 uh, on, on this thing because I, I, I think you guys, like, um. I think uh, conspiracy not right originally uh, did the royalties on uh, OpenSea, which is just one percent, which is quite low. Uh, so my my question on that is like, is the royalty can change? And if yes, I would probably like rather uh, prefer to see maybe like a higher royalty and less realms minted by by the team. Because obviously, like you got this Ethereum uh, balance, which I actually like, I I haven't checked. Uh, I'm not too sure, but you know, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be enough for for the team to to progress in the development. Obviously, like now, it's I think it's like seven of you guys, right? Instead of uh, conspiracy nut was basically probably planning everything to be by himself. Um, so yeah, I, I was thinking if you if you had a thought to run that really. Um, so just to it was it the, the the royalty um, coin. I'm not sure what can happen with that. Well, so yeah, I, I, the royalty can change for sure. Uh, I don't think we, there's a need to change it right now, and all the royalties are going to the multi-stig and that is going to be a continued source of funding for the team. Um, I definitely hear, you know, we, we discussed uh, this, this idea of, 
minting, completing the mint in this way for uh, a while now uh, for the exact reasons that you brought up, right? The team is a big team and it is important that we have funding for that team. And so we did not want to prematurely um, complete the mints. But like you also said, and our belief is the same, uh, that we're going to be, uh, you know, running this giveaway. We have a couple other uh, marketing steps that we're going to be taking. And so we don't foresee minting 1,300 realms on the 4th, right? Our idea is that we put an end date on it. And as a team, we work to make sure people know that there's an end date and to build up some uh, awareness around that end date to try to drive as much of the minting to be finished by the community as possible so that that money can go to the development team. Um, but, you know, there's also a discussion to be had about, you know, let's say there's 400 left on the fourth. Um, we're, we're going to be holding those realms in a team wallet and discussing you know, how can we use those realms to help continue to fund the future development? And we don't have a clear roadmap on exactly what the best approach for that is. Um, but like some people brought up on, you know, we could use them to, you know, we could put them on OpenSea or we could use them in the ecosystem to help, you know, generate some some revenue for the team. So I, I definitely appreciate your concern. and. Um, that making sure that the team has what it needs to keep going. Uh, but we did have a lot of conversations around this and the team has discussed all the various outcomes. And we think that this is the best path forward to um, push towards the fourth, get as many as minted as possible, complete the mint, get verified. Um, and we will have enough resources uh, to, to continue the development. That was kind of the, the, discussion and the team voted on it and this is where we landed so i appreciate you kind of like reflecting all of those things um we definitely considered all of those different things uh and if we need to up the the uh royalty we can do so i we just don't see a need for that at the current moment and are really just focused on hey let's develop out this system you know the the amm is going to have you know, some revenue sources for the team, you know, in the trading fees, uh, the building, constructing, we can we can bake in small things that allow for the development to continue to be funded over and above what we're already planning for. And so we're definitely considering those things and ready to take those moves. Uh, but we did all agree that ending the mint, getting verified, and then moving it all to Arbitrum once it it's all minted is um, the best for realm holders. And it's also like the, the best for the team. So we can focus on building it out and, and move on from the minting discussion and really talk about how do we get more people involved in use using realms. Um, but that's a great question. I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for answering that. Yeah. Because I, you know, nowadays you see, uh, you know, the market in general, the crypto market kind of like sometimes feels really saturated with any kind of like projects with really different ideas. And uh, most of the times they kind of, uh, they kind of like run into problem with managing treasury and uh, keeping basically going forward. Just like whether they've got like great tech or great ideas and things, I think is something that Maybe, you know, like, you know, in, in a week time, if you guys like do great marketing, then maybe we get like this, well, whatever, like 130th year, man, every realm is minted and you guys basically, you, you, you have Ethereum and you own uh, virtually no realms, right? Which I think uh, uh, either way, th th this should be like a balanced way between uh having like no realms or having like uh more ethereum obviously for for you guys to going forward yeah and um as coin touched on you know this yeah well luckily that we're all full stack developers um so you know we're building all of this and we can build all of it 
Um, so, uh, and, and, and as yeah, Cohen touched on with the um, in terms of the economics of the game, this is where we're going to bake in fees that will perpetually keep funding the platform moving forward. Um, and it also, also, the Lord's token will 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 uh, provide some liquidity as well. So we just got to get there. That's where we're hyper focused on getting to. Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I'm uh, hoping for as well. That's yeah, um, you know, uh, I just think you guys again. Um, I think you guys are developing like great, great project, which could be like the kind of like founding basis for maybe uh, other projects like coming down the line. Uh, we've seen like many similar play to earn kind of projects, like they are kind of. Uh, you know, with the idea of having lands and passive income, and this is what like gets people excited. So I think if you kind of, I I, I think if you guys like market it in a in a good way, you, like you guys will get basically Ethereum like thrown at the project, uh, which obviously is gonna benefit everyone at the end of the day. Everyone wants to be part of a project that is successful and makes everyone money. And I think, uh, yeah, you, you guys are like doing great into, uh, into focusing on, on the tech first, actually, because I I've seen personally, like the main loot discord has been just like basically spam for like money grabbing projects. You know, it, it, it is kind of like got to the point that it's like super overwhelming and you say like, okay, without even checking, you say 99.9% .9 of those projects, they're, they're scam, like just trying to get money. But I think like you guys came early enough and just got together basically like two weeks ago uh, with the team expanding and you guys have been doing great since then. So uh, yeah, um, I'm done with my question. It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Thanks, Grug. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was nice to uh, finally hear Dark Lord Grug's uh, voice. <laughs> it's always <laughs> it's always yeah. interesting when you talk to someone on uh, yeah, you know, like, on uh, chat. Last time I was listening, but like I was, uh, yeah, my my girlfriend was sleeping next to me, so I couldn't say anything. This time I'm back from mine, so I could, Good, could yeah. talk. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for the questions, uh, Grug, you're and uh, you're a val valuable uh, val valuable mod lord. <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. Um, great. Well, um, oh, I think Secretive just asked another question. Um, how accessible will the game be for smaller wallet sizes? Um, well, this is where we're like, this is why the this is why we're designing it to interoperate with other, um, you know, other derivatives, and like everybody can afford M loot right now. So if you don't have any M loot, go and mint a few. Um, but you'll be able to use Mloot on Realms, for example, in the future and still play the game. You just, the Realm holders will be the, you know, they're basically the lords of the system. Um, they're owning the land that all the other games are played on. So it's profitable for the Realm lords, but smaller wallet sizes, um, even if you just have a Mloot, you'll still be able to play. Um, and you'll be able to grind up and, uh, potentially maybe get a Realm. Um. Okay, cool. That was my question. Because um, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. That's me. Hello. 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 Secret here. Hello. 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 <laughs> uh, you get asking questions in text and then jumping in with voice. But yeah, the, I, I actually joined the call late and, and I missed the first call. So I'm kind of coming to this. And I'm also coming to uh, it from, from not knowing the loot project all that well because I took a bit of time. Oh, I went on holiday. And that's a long oh, time wow. to take out of long time to take <laughs> out of crypto is, is or NFTs are two weeks and you come back and nothing makes sense anymore. But I guess yeah, I was just looking at it and we're talking about you know play to earn and talking about um, building something which you know ideally doesn't just um, serve the the kind of existing community of ETH lords um, who who. Um, who probably are dominating kind of the, the minting and, and, and the, yeah, the secondary markets, you know, um, and whether it's kind of got that, 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 um, that uh, vibe that axes have when you've got the people who own the assets and the people who kind of use those assets, kind of like tools to work with. Maybe it's that, but um, 
now understanding that basically all the other assets from the different projects just basically are used as layers on top of the land makes sense. Correct. You know, yeah. Now I, I get that, it. yeah. 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 Correct. And then, like, this is, I mean, this is the difference between, I mean, the, the innovation with, uh, um, with loot was that all the data is on chain. And, you know, axes are all metadata, to my understanding. Uh, and so uh, axes ha basically have, you know, that they have their own centralized um, API that when, you know, you play a game on Axie, uh, you know, and, you know, you breed something, the API gets interacted with and then breeds the new Axie, which gets minted as an NFT, but its metadata is stored on the Axie's server. Mm. Whereas what we're doing is the data is actually on Ethereum. And so we're interacting with it via Ethereum. There's no central DB. And so this is the difference. It'll still be play to earn, but there's no central DB where like um, the data stored. All the data is on chain. And that's what you're interacting with. And so it's, all, it's actually another layer of decentralized decentralization um, over Axie. And um, any, yeah. with with regards to the, the late with Arbitum, are you is this the only project that's at that stage of, of developing a bridge to layer two or others? Is there is there a race going on? Um well I think treasure is I don't know uh, to be honest, but it's amazing when you you know, heads down working on something, you barely even look at the yeah. market. Um yeah. and and like I you know, uh, I haven't been, you know, um, I haven't been spending time, um, you know, you know, following every single derivative. The, probably the biggest derivative that I've been following is Treasure, um, uh, because they're like actually, um, you know, doing doing some things. And uh, I think they said they're going to move to Arbitrum, but they'll. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's any Treasure holders here. They someone else might know a better. I full up. Talk Talking with the devs, I you, they they would like to because the gas is just crazy uh, yeah. and and really a sticking point for their community. But treasure is another example of why we're trying to like measure twice and cut once because yeah. they've already taken a lot of steps on layer one, and to move to a new layer is is a exponentially yeah. harder task when there's already so many plate pieces in place. And that's yeah, why exactly. we're trying to be really focused and really deliberate yeah. about how do we build out, and then once it's built out, um, then yeah. we can like really, really get the the hype machine or whatever going for yeah. realm holders because um, exactly. we, we have a plan and we want to execute it right. And so there's a couple projects I've talked to that are considering moving to Arbitrum, but. Like we're seeing in the development, it is uh, it's doable, but it's a process, and it has to be a very deliberate process. And that's why we're we made that decision first, and then we're going to build everything with that in mind instead of trying to do it the other way around. Yeah, because I mean, to create a you know staking contract is trivial, really. Um, but you know, just like what happened with treasure, uh, you know, each one of those unravels to unravel a specific treasure. If you want to move them to Arbitrum, each one of them are is a separate transaction because they're their own tokens now. Right. Uh, and so, so we want to do all those actions on Arbitrum yeah. um, rather than on Layer 1. And uh, yeah, to my knowledge, I don't know if anyone else, any other project in the Lootverse has even a beta bridge. Hmm. Maybe they're working I on think, a bridge? I guess, but... I guess that that's, you know, when you look at... Um... You know, staggering out news and doing like having a pipeline of, of 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 news, which kind of you know people can pick up on, and you don't know what what news people are going to pick up on and what's going to get ignored. But I think that's obviously a pretty big one. I also wonder if there's any possibility of, and it's probably too too late down the line with Arbitum actually, but um, getting kind of grants or support from their team. But obviously, they're probably completely inundated. I'd imagine at this point, it's not a bad idea though. Um... I think yeah, they're, getting, I mean, people, they're getting hammered at the moment. I think. <laughs> I, 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 I work with a project, and we were talking to them, and it was a possibility. And then 
where you kind of took our foot off the gas and then obviously they've they've um uh become like the kind of you know a, the, the center of conversation and you know they've got a huge amount going on they don't really need to support projects probably in quite the same way to, to get them to, to sort of like bridge over to the platform but it still might be worth reaching out i don't know if you have somebody who is uh almost like your partnerships person or somebody could reach out to them someone with some credibility whatever and can talk with their language but definitely worth a try yeah yeah actually that's that's uh they're um I don't know, if anybody wants to dive into some technical stuff, we're actually planning on using um, this um, EIP two five three five diamonds. Uh, you can check it out. Um, it's basically this um, storage structure that allows for expandability. And uh, there's 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 actually there was a comment that came up yesterday uh, about Arbitrum, a guy from Arbitrum asking for developers. So I might actually reach out to him and tell him what we're doing. Do might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah. Popped, just, just you just sparked that idea. I saw it before, um, and I'll I'll hit him up and see what he has to say. He might have some good insight, and I mean, it'd be great to get their um, seal of approval as well. You know. Yeah, well, you know, just just uh, even if you just got featured on the website, I mean, it's it's, exactly. it's uh, validation for sure, um, and we'll bring eyes to the project. And there was one other thing which I was going to ask, but I've, it's now um, escaped my mind. Oh, yeah, I, th I think it's, it's been mentioned quite a bit. Um, but I think that the power uh, for, for everyone in this in this group already, perhaps kind of advanced in their understanding of um, of of like loot and the project. And you can visualize when you talk about it you, and you're talking about the different projects, you can visualize, oh, they're doing this and we're doing that. But for example, for me, and I'm, I'm sort of, you know, not a complete noob when it comes to crypto or NFTs or anything, I, I actually struggled to understand exactly what the kind of uh, end goal was. And I think people have talked about infographics or um, just any way yeah. that you can, you, you can express the information other than just, yeah. you know, words will really help. Yeah, yeah no, you're, you're right. Explainability, and <laughs> you know, virality. <laughs> yeah, but I know that also. Right. It's difficult. It's difficult because you're, you're developing and all that stuff. But if there's anybody in the community who's who's who's, who's good at communicating and able to pull together a visual, then great. Yeah, I'm actually. I, I I don't know if anyone's a Figma lord here, but um, uh, I that that flowchart. I mean, it, it, these like you know, the economic system that we designed. You know, we've you know we've we've it's been iterative. You know, um, and we've landed on what we're doing now um but and and we can put it into a graph now it's just we were careful you know we don't, we don't want to say something and have to go back on it we want to be very mm. calculated in our in our communication and um it, you know not just do a hype that we have to go back on we want to do yeah. legitimate hype if you know what i mean yeah 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 just just quality pieces rather than yeah. noise I guess. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that that stuff or everything you just described is what we're working on this week. Um, and this next article, if you're, um, I don't know, if you're an eco economist, uh, we're, we're going to go deep into some of the actual micro interactions in the system that keep the supply in ba balance, um, which will turn into infographics as well, uh, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, push it all push the, all of that out. And so you really you really lean into the economic side of the project as opposed to i guess the uh gameplay or <laughs> yeah maybe maybe yeah. so like, I, don't, I don't know maybe a bit of balance um i mean yeah i you know i i guess we're speaking to the you know the the, the kind of eth community um and they're all probably what they're looking for is economic opportunities in a, in a kind of playful way and, and the game is making you know more ETH even if you never actually sell anything but you know theoretically having things that are worth more ETH and um, maybe the whole just focusing on the economics is, is actually smart um, but some visual kind of yeah. some taste taste of gameplay I guess would be nice I mean I know that for example when I scroll through my feed I, I posted this into the chat the other day when I saw the loot mart or something like that the sort of first visual um, yeah it just, you know, it stopped me in my tracks and sort of think, ah, oh, okay, I can kind of see yeah. that now, you know. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And we, we're actually working on the S Realm um, thing. I don't. You should probably go if you just jumped in the last day. Yes. Read the first two articles too, because um, and have a look at the Figma board because it all stems around this um, NFT called an S Realm, which is where the data is going to be contained. Yeah, I think that I did read it, but skimmed it and probably went over my head. But I'll go back. Having had this conversation, I'll go back through and try to make more sense of it. <laughs> right. But yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's all my questions done. Uh, nice to meet you guys. Where is everyone from? Where are you guys all from? Sounds like different accents. Uh, Australia. But you're not yeah. all from Australia. There's some Americans in the mix too? Yeah. Coins. Yeah. Coins. Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, um, yeah, nice to meet you guys. Keep it going, Likewise. get some sleep. Uh, <laughs> may, may I ask some more, some more questions, please? I, I don't want to be... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got a question. I'm sorry, but I got I to gotta run. It's uh, kid's bedtime. I, so it's, it's a, keep the yeah, conversation right, going. We'll but thank you all later. for today, and I'm excited for the next week's call. Cheers. Yeah, all right, sure. see you, Coin. See you, man. So um, maybe you guys can ask like uh, the questions that I got. Like, yeah, they're actually like some simple ones, really. Um, I was thinking... Like, um, so technically, what's gonna happen with the once we've been bridged the realms into uh, the layer two, will people like be able to sell it back, like on OpenSea? Uh, how's that gonna work? OpenSea is at the moment, I know, looking at a Arbitrum launch as well. Um, so you may not even need to move back to the layer one to sell, um, which would be the ideal situation for everyone, I think. Oh, that, that, that were... that's really interesting. I, I really didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know they've definitely been in close contact between OpenSea because, you know, they've got a massive issue with gas fees as well, being the biggest consumer yeah. of um, fees on Ethereum. Yeah. So any layer two solution they can do with um, the finality of the eth Ethereum security is, is going to be really appealing yeah. to them. Yeah, that's great. But... Also, also because I know the OpenSea uh, partnered with uh, uh, Immutable X, which is supposed to be a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, just, well... No job, yeah, it is. exclusive for NFTs in general. So yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm actually surprised that you said that because I was, I was actually expecting Immutable X to come first and then, you know, grabbing the kind of like, uh, you know, marketplace from OpenSea. Because obviously, like, I, I think many projects on, especially NFTs-based projects, there's no point of spending like such an, um, like, source of like amount of fees just to transfer like some uh nfts around so yeah uh yeah just like uh i was curious yeah. about that with these layer two solutions still being so fresh you know i think they're big platforms as well they're really waiting to see where a lot of the volume and liquidity heads towards um before they do make their final decisions on launching for them um so yeah that's that's a bit of a process in that but having said all this you still will be able to withdraw your realm back to layer one um and sell it on layer one or another layer two if you chose to bridge there so you've got that flexibility okay. yeah no, and we might do a you know a custom uh, marketplace in the platform too who knows yeah that, um, that would be interesting well, you guys are already like uh, ahead of the curve anyway, so uh, I know there's a lot of work to be done, but, you know, and everyone <laughs> gets excited with like ideas like, oh, do the bridge, do the marketplace, do the, do the AMM, and, you know, I know, I know that there is a lot of like work actually involved in, you know, unless you such, I don't know, a team of 100 people like working together and then you can bash it maybe like two weeks, you know. Yeah, like, we're moving pretty fast and, um, you know, it's, oh it's yeah, coming. you're literally like moving like literally like speed of lights, like compared to main, most of the other projects. Like it's it's really unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. Yeah, I think the benefit that we have is that all you know, red, red, myself, Tiki, Coin, um, we're all we're all hybrids, and we all can do most things. Um, so we don't need to wait on people. Uh, which is a big yeah, benefit. Right. Yeah, cool. 
Um, was there any other any other questions, Greg? You had any others? No, I'm um, I'm done for tonight. Thank you for uh, great. Mine. Great. All right. Well, um, it was a uh, nice. Uh, well, I hope that answered a lot of questions, and uh, look forward to the meeting next week with everyone. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.